Hi, I'm Gary. And I'm Adam. And today we're talking about hybrid corporate functions. All right. So Gary, when you say a hybrid corporate function, what actually are you talking about? So I'm talking about like large uh, events like a, like a town hall or a seminar where we have like 50 plus people and you've got local presenters and local participants uh, alongside remote participants and remote presenters. I guess they're not really alongside them, but you, you know, you get the Well, they're remote. They're, they're remote, remotely. Yeah, exactly, yeah. but it works, it works. And, and so when you do that, there's, of course, you're like, well, we're gonna need some things, some technology stuff, but you know, in addition to the obvious stuff, that, you know, we're gonna need cameras and speakers and microphones and all sorts of things like that. A for clicker, yeah. Presentation clicker yeah. for both sides. There's a lot of pieces that are really important that maybe you aren't thinking about. So once you're talking about an event that is 50 plus people into the hundreds, maybe even more than that, how do you manage that? This is not just gonna be like, a, I opened up Zoom on my laptop and you, they opened up Zoom on their laptop. Boom. Uh, could you imagine all of those open microphones? It doesn't work. <laughs> um, so one thing to keep in mind is what is a good software solution? And at this point, I'd say all the major players have a webinar style software solution sure. where you get a moderator. And so you assign someone to be the moderator and their job for the whole event is to manage the remote participants. And what that looks like is they will be able to mute people and unmute people. They will be able to spotlight their video. Um, they'll see if someone raises their hand or asks a question in chat. And they're kind of helping to be the conduit between the remote participants and the local participants. Kind of, kind of bridge that, that space gap and, and make it all kind of feel like everybody's uh, working together. Absolutely. And another thing to keep in mind is what is the experience for the people in the room and the people that are participating remotely? And we want to make sure that they have a similar experience and that they're all acknowledged. So if you're up there and you're giving a presentation to everyone in the room and you never once look at the camera and you never once acknowledge that there's people participating remotely. It's kind of, it's kind of weird, right? The, the, the remote participants feel kind of left out. Like, I mean, we've all been like to, to those, those webinars where this happens, right? And then you're over there in the, the chairs. You know, kind of passing out. Going I mean, for a snoozer. Yeah, yeah. Going for a snoozer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not what I do during webinars. Yeah. No. Never once. <laughs> so so it, it's, it's really nice to say, hey, I know that there's people here. I want to welcome everyone that's come here and anyone that's uh, participating remotely. It's always nice to acknowledge them. And it's always good to leave time and to check with your moderator to make sure that there are no questions or any sort of feedback that those people are giving. What are the pieces of equipment that might help us do this? Yeah, so, so the pieces to this puzzle, Adam, are, uh, you know, we're going to need a, a film production team. And that, that team could be a team of one person if it's just like kind of a, a smaller event and you just have one camera. Or it could be up to, you know, several people where you've got, you know, different camera operators and you've got a director telling, you know, which shot we're going to take now. Uh, you're also going to need an, an audio production team, you know, somebody to do the sound in the room that everybody, all the local participants are in and the local presenters in, as well as a broadcast audio person to make sure that the sound going out to the remote participants, um, you know, is, is good and appropriate for what their experience is. On top of that, Adam already talked about the moderator. You're going to need a moderator to, uh, you know, do the moderate and stuff. Yeah. yeah, the moderating stuff. And then, and then kind of a, a, an event production person, right? This is kind of overseeing the entire event, making sure that things are running smoothly, making sure that if something is going off the rails, that people then are aware of that and try to get everything back together and make sure that everything moves fluidly. Yeah, and, and, that, and that event producer, the skill they have is the ability to speak the language of all the different people. They can make sure that the presenters are going up on stage at time. They can also make sure that when the moderator says somebody has a question, they communicate that to the sound person so the sound person can bring up the microphone of the remote participant so they're heard. And so that producer is like a really crucial person to make sure that the whole event goes well and that all of the different pieces are working together. So basically, to wrap all that up, Tech-wise, what you're going to need is you're going to need, in the space, a local sound system. Uh, cameras, microphones, and screens so everybody in the building can see all the remote participants. And then you're going to need a few other things. Yeah, so aside from the tech, you're also going to need uh, you know, to acknowledge the remote participants and the local participants. Give yourself a chance to kind of run through uh, and practice with the technology. And your event production staff and your moderator can help you with all this. And if you need any help with any of that, feel free to give us a call, uh, shoot us an email, or leave comments down below, and we're happy to help.
Thanks. 